thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Simon. Uh, welcome, uh, and um, it's my pleasure uh, to start with a pro uh, talk on uh, ECPR. Uh, as you said, it's a controversial intervention, definitely. And uh, I'm doing this for almost more than 10 years. And more we are performing CTPR, more we know that this is not an easy topic and, and there is no simple uh, answer to question whether ECPR should be routinely done or not, and especially for out of hospital uh, cardiac arrest. Anyway, there is cases that uh, remain in your mind, actually, that um, started uh, our efforts. And this is a picture from 2006, a lady I resuscitated for more than two hours. And she died under our hands. And that was a stimulus uh, to start to do something. And since that time, what we learned is that it worked, definitely. If it's done in a proper circumstances, in a proper uh, medical environment and in proper patients. However, to define uh, those parameters, it's not easy. Uh, basically, technically, uh, it's just a uh, emergency uh, implantation of uh, venal arterial ECMO, uh, femoral femoral usually, and here you can uh, see a patient on the ICU after ECPR. So technically, it's not a basic problem. You have, just have to be uh, precise and fast. However, the logistics around is uh, the most important part of ECPR. As you said uh, in your introduction, it's increasing. This is data from ELSA registry, more than 1,700 patients. You see um, extreme increase after 2012 and the same mortality in past years over um, uh, somewhere around 30%. This is a mixed population of in-hospital and out-of-hospital uh, cardiac arrest cases. And this is basically the number three. See, it's a little better for uh, in hospital cardiac arrest, a uh, little more for out of hospital arrest. Uh, the reason why people love to perform ECPR is that it's uh, it's full of emotion, it's attractive, uh, it brings young patients who are who are dying and we're trying to save them. And um, people are doing it despite the fact that we really don't have a strong data to support this intervention and mainly in out of hospital cardiac arrest. So far there's been only one randomized controlled trial uh, published on this topic, it's the RS trial from Minneapolis and the Demetris will have a talk um, in a couple uh, a couple of minutes, actually, and uh, this trial is again very controversial. Only thirty patients have been have been enrolled. Only fifteen to fifteen, or fifteen to fourteen, comparison uh, in the randomized arms. And the study was stopped by the SMB, showing the benefit of, uh, of ECPR. And we might discuss uh, later this study. And uh, as I said, um, uh, both the results of this study and many other non-randomized uh, trials and observations has confirmed confirmed um, uh, the mortalities, I have said, so around 20% for out-of-hospital and 30 to 40 for in-hospital. However, uh, the ECPR brings uh, something we call hope, and that we hope that the patient might be saved, and it uh, quite frequently turns over to despair. And moreover, the ethical issues are important during ECPR. We, we face the bridge to nowhere situation quite often, and we have no idea usually whether the patient would like us to do what, um, what we actually do. Definitely, it needs to be trained. Uh, it needs uh, to be performed by uh, highly specialized uh, centers and highly specialized teams. It's kind of a battlefield. It's all about the time and uh, the hope during the time. And um, as shown in our previous congresses, it can be compared to the pit stop training uh, where a very complex intervention must be done within a limited uh, time span. What is the population we, we are actually considering for ECPR. It's uh, the refractory cardiac arrest, usually defined as a cardiac arrest, which is not reacting to usual uh, CPR defibrillation in case of shock algorithms. And you see how uh, the mortality uh, or the chance for survival decreases with increasing number of defibrillation. Defibrillations in the Swedish registry of over 19,000 patients. And if we face six, seven, maybe eight unsuccessful defibrillations in patients with ventricular fibrillation, the chance for survival goes steeply down to five, seven percent, actually. And as nicely shown by Brian Bruno a couple of years ago, 
go in this study, there is really time dependency uh, to, to survival. So if we get more than 25 to 30 minutes, our chance for survival is somewhere around 5%. So we have to ask, is it really worthwhile to do this? And moreover, uh, if you uh, if you if we analyzed um, the outcome of patients, it's nicely seen here that 50 and 90% of cases uh, who survived reached ROSC in the eighth and 24th minute of, uh, of CPR. So somewhere around 16 minutes of ongoing uh, advanced cardiac loss support, including defibrillations, uh, uh, airway securement, and all the usual interventions we do, we have to decide whether this patient will ultimately reach ROSC, and there is no surrogate marker to, um, to recognize this, and whether we should go for the eCPR track. So this is a breaking point. There have been studies, uh, non-randomized, as this one from uh, from the Demetrius Yanopoulos group, showing nicely that if uh, they compared the ECMO track, the uh, University of Minneapolis ECPR approach, versus the placebo arm of the Emil Daron study, they have shown in the different time zones that the ECPR patients, starting from let's say, short, short cardiac arrest of 30 minutes up to uh, almost one and a half hour, there's been always the difference between eCPR cases surviving better and the standard CPR. Other studies, non-randomized like this one from, from Belgium, again, showed a statistically significant better survival in patients with refractory cardiac arrest. And, and a typical time when patients arrive either to hospital or in uh, some um, towns and countries like Paris, or uh, I'm not sure whether you still do it, Thomas, in Regensburg, that um, the times are around one hour uh, to reach the patient in refractory cardiac arrest. So, so the chance for survival in patients who've been, who have been resuscitated for 60 minutes, it's not uh, 50, it's not uh, 100%, it's always somewhere around 25 to 30%. 30%. So uh, this is the Iris trial that have been, been uh, published in November last year showing in a, in a small group of 30 patients that are six patients from the ECMO group who have been brought to hospital under ongoing CPR, randomized to ECMO group and put on ECMO. Six of 15 patients uh, survived actually uh, compared to only one from the standard group uh, and uh, uh, this particular patient actually died within three months and he had a poor neurologic outcome. And based on this data and the stopping cruels from the trial, the trial was stopped and uh, pronounced positive in terms of uh, ECMO, uh, ECMO benefit for patients in refractory cardiac. Arrest. What has to be said is that um, uh, the investigators actually decided on enrollment of the patient to study after arriving to a hospital. So after an average of 50 minutes of CPR compared to other studies, including ours, that we, we are deciding on the ECPR track earlier during the on-scene resuscitation, and this is a major difference in, in those trials. If you look at um, their data, so we have 43% survival based on this small group of patients, but interestingly, as you see in both groups, the patients um, have been uh, accepted and have been admitted to hospital without ROSC, so still under ongoing CPR. The transport time was somewhere around 20 minutes. Initial pH was very low in both groups, um, suggesting uh, advanced metabolic derangements, and those who survived actually recovered nicely in their cardiac function, and the discharge rejection fraction was more than 40 percent. Uh, but there's a word of caution. So everybody who performs eCPR knows that the the eCPR itself works, but the even more important is the logistics before we can even cannulate a patient for eCPR. And this is a nice um, recent study from Norway uh, comparing the era pre-eCPR protocol and after uh, implementing eCPR protocol. And you see the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest cases underwent some, uh, some kind of triage um, in terms of inclusion uh, criteria for ECPR, uh, the patient was deemed appropriate, was brought to hospital under ongoing CPR, and again uh, evaluated for a possible uh, ECPR, so to two-step approach, very similar as we did in, uh, in, in our study, and uh, and potentially were connected to ECPR. And if you look to 
if you look to the results and compare the before and after, you see that before for the eight patients, uh, 21 patients survived, so 44% uh, survival. However, 100% of those patients had a favorable neurologic outcome of CBC 1 to 2. Um, compared to only 37 patients out of 100, which was basically the same, however, only 81% of those patients with favorable outcome, and this difference was statistically significant, suggesting there may be some problem with prolonged uh, CPR and in-transport CPR quality, and definitely it, the, the, the problem is not as easy, and we cannot find a simple answer to the question whether uh, to transfer patients routinely for eCPR or not. And in this study, the eCPR protocol did not increase the survival uh, for, uh, for our hospital cardiac arrest. Similarly, uh, Brian Gruner from Canada on over on more than 27,000 patients has shown that the intra-RS transport compared with continued on-scene resuscitation had a probability of survival of 4 versus 8.5 percent. This is a very important study showing that the, uh, the time before implementing the CPR, so the decision time, the bystander CPR, uh, logistics of pre-hospital care, makes the major, major difference. And if you look to their analysis, and you, you, you see in this um, in this plot, uh, what favors the on-scene resuscitation is basically everything, uh, EMS level of care, witnessed uh, cardiac arrest, initial rhythm. However, in those patients on the right side, as you see, uh, in um, uh, differentiated on the time-based level, so those patients with a really the refractory cardiac arrest of more than 25 minutes, there's been a tendency that favored the intra hours of transport for CPR. So as I said, it's not as easy. And the most difficult part is to decide when the patient should be considered for the CPR. As you know, there is several trials ongoing on this topic. Um, the ARIS trial has been preliminary stopped. The inception the multi center trial has been finished. Our trial has been also preliminary stopped after 256 patients enrolled. And uh, what I can announce is, and I'm really sorry I cannot disclose any of our results because we are under embargo. Our trial will be presented um, on 17th of May, so um, in about 10 days during the ACC late breaking clinical trials uh, presentation and we'll disclose all, all our uh, results. And we'll show the standard versus so-called hyperinvasive approach. We, we had a bundle of interventions, early transport, mechanical support, and early eCPR and invasive, invasive uh, management versus standard ACLS, which was primary outcome of CPC at 180 days and secondary cardiac and neuro recovery outcomes. And we'll also, also show the subgroup analysis of those patients divided uh, in terms of the length of CPR and Mainly, we will focus on the subgroup of patients who have been resuscitated for more than 45 minutes. So let me conclude that uh, uh, not just ECLS alone, but a comprehensive approach, including ECLS, may have an impact on logistics for all the hospital cardiac arrest patients. We have technology, and we still need to define properly the patients uh, suitable for ECPR and optimize the logistics. And I'm really sure that the randomized studies are absolutely necessary. Uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah, and that was great. Thank you very much. You have kept perfectly in time. Of course, we're a little bit too early. I would have been really curious to get the results of, of the Prague study. But because you were talking pro ECPR out of hospital, I'm hoping that you will remain pro after the results of your, of your trial. Now, Alan Wulsteke will talk against it. I think, Alan, is a little bit more difficult what you have to talk about now. Just to introduce.